writing in Word, saving in Markdown, and publishing in LaTeX, which I believe may take some pain out of scientific publishing and writing as we know it today. And in particular, I want to uh, talk to you about Markdown. Um, is anybody here who knows what Markdown is or uses it? Not even the bioinformaticians. Okay. Who is using LaTeX? Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, and who would like to use LaTeX but finds it quite difficult? Okay, cool. <laughs> so we have, for those of you who already use LaTeX, this talk will contain a little bit information on how to make this a lot easier. And for everybody who wants to start using LaTeX, as I was about half a year ago, this will probably give you an opportunity or an idea to get into this whole topic on an easier level, because obviously LaTeX itself has quite a high learning curve, what a steep learning curve. So, scientific writing touches our everyday work experience from the very small stuff like just taking notes or planning an experiment or brainstorming ideas up to the full-scale writing of a manuscript or even the entire thesis. And Markdown is quite versatile, so I would argue that it can help you in all of these aspects a little bit. But first, before I explain what Markdown actually is, and we go a little bit into the technical details, we need to understand a little bit about markup languages. So this is a concept or a design philosophy that means that you, the writer, should concentrate on the content of your document, which is, of course, the text, the figures, and any other kind of scientific stuff that we do, like whatever reference lists, for example. And then the marking up or the telling how a certain portion of your document should be presented, this is a different step. And this can either be done by someone else or it can be you afterwards, after writing the content. And then a typesetting program nowadays, of course it's a software, um, generates your final document. So in case this concept is familiar to you, then you probably know what comes next, but if it's not, you've definitely already used it because most modern document form formats are markup in one way or the other. So for example, the word processors like Microsoft Word, they save a markup version of your document in the file and just present you the final document all the time and they do this process continuously. So two examples for, at least in the science world, quite popular markup languages are LaTeX, of course, which is just over 30 years old uh, nowadays, and HTML just over 20. And as you can see, the text which you actually write um, is wrapped in these commands or tags, which are the markup commands. And these uh, commands are manifold and they also take up a lot of like space on the page. So it's quite hard to actually read a markup formatted document, except if you have it in its final form. So for example, HTML, of course, renders to a website. And in case next time you visit a website that you know, that you're familiar with, uh, right-click on it and select the show source option and then you will probably not recognize it again because it's so hard to read. But markup makes a document machine readable. So telling the computer what is a species name, what is a title, what is a gene name, mutant name, whatever, yeah, that makes your document machine readable to some extent. And that is useful. Now, Markdown is a markup language, but a very min minimalistic one. As you can see, it uses very few symbols to represent the commands. So for example, bold is just two symbols in front and two symbols behind a symbol, uh, behind a word. Then headings are just the number of these octothorpe or pound characters and so on and so on. Um, that means it's easy to read. I could give you pages and pages of markdown formatted documents right now and you would all be able to read it. Maybe wonder, oh, wh what's the symbol there? Um, but while you read it, it becomes logical, it is logical, and you would learn Markdown just by reading it. And it's, of course, also fast to type. So the separation of first concentrating on your text and then concentrating on the annotation or the markup doesn't have to be that way. Um, it is over 10 years old by now and has, defined, has been defined by these two gentlemen um, who designed it for web publishing. So its primary function is to convert to HTML code and then yeah, be a website, basically. And obviously there's also commands for links, for images, lists, and all this stuff that you um, might find on a website. It has not been designed really for scientists, but in these 10 years it has evolved to something that is still usable for us, and that's what I would like to continue with. But before, definitely need to give you a little disclaimer here, because 
it's a new way to work. Uh, if, you, if you have used LaTeX, it's probably very easy, but if you have not, please be careful, don't change horses in the middle of the river, and although, although you can. Um, maybe take a document that you've already finished and where you know, okay, this is how it looks when I do it in the classical way, and then convert it to Markdown. It's maybe a weekend project, and then you will see if there is a, a difference. Uh, it's probably there is a difference, and if you will see if you like this difference. Um, you will, at the very least, probably have to install one program, but you can really geek out on it and go very, very deep into this. So, be careful. Also, you have to accept that the power over how your document actually looks in the end is given away to templates, to style files, and so on, which have been written by other people. For example, this one is a default uh, Beamer template. I've tried to adjust it to the um, corporate design of the university, but I saw that, oh, this is probably uh, like a weekend project again, and I wanted to uh, concentrate on the content here, and so I didn't do it. Um, but I would say the default template is quite okay already. But worry not, you can always return to the docx format and to Microsoft Word in case you encounter problems, because Markdown is so well defined that it not only converts nicely to a website, but also to the docx format. So my suggestion is do it with something you've already finished or with something new and small project, an unimportant one, like a grad school report or something. Yeah. So <laughs> That's what I did uh, as well, so converting a document, a manuscript that I had handed in. Um, one use case that is probably the most simple one, and this is what I said before, you have to install one tool to use it. Um, in this case, there's, for example, editors which give you a live preview of the finished HTML. And yeah, lab journaling. So I find it, found it quite useful to plan my experiments, to keep an overview of what do I still need to do, what did I do already. Um, it has checklists. Then, as you can see, it has lists, which are quite easily defined. And um, at the bench, I would, of course, do my notes by hand, but then digitize them very quickly. And because Markdown is so fast to type down, it is not a lot of work. And it preserves your notes much better than um, yeah, a loose bundle of papers. We know how it is. And yeah, when I finish the analysis, obviously, the plots can be inserted as well, so you can glue your results digitally into your lab journal. Okay, If you're using R uh, for doing a data analysis, there's very good news because there's a package called R Markdown, which lets you intermix your R code with Markdown formatted uh, text, so you can document your analysis while you're doing it. And in the finished document that you can um, produce from it, you, as you can see, you can show the code, or you can hide the code, or you can include plots or other results from your script uh, if you're interested. And I found this useful to yeah, bring to a discussion with my PI. And if your PI is even no R, then it's even better because you can not only discuss the data and the results, but also review the R code, yeah, which can be helpful if you're um, interested in learning more R. Then, um, <clears throat> you know this problem? Yeah, sending documents, <laughs> sending documents around, and then using track changes uh, function or something like this. Markdown can also help with that a little bit um, because it opens up this whole world of software version control. Um, because Markdown is a plain text format, the software that um, software engineers use to track their source code can be also applied to documents. And as you can see here in a small project, I simply versioned uh, a document that way. And in the Windows File Explorer, I only see the latest set of files, no different version in the files, because the versions are all stored internally in a database. And this is also like a little watchdog program to, to keep your, an eye on your um, working folder and alert you of file changes, and as you can see, nicely, dis nicely display which kind of changes occurred. Um, this is even useful for using it on your own, but it, it becomes especially powerful if you use it with um, other people and collaborate on it, because this is much better to work on the same set of files than to send a file around via email. So, And uh, I've already given a talk to my colleagues about it, if you want to look it up. Yeah, the collaboration. Um, as I said, Git makes this a lot smoother and more effective. I mean, you all have smartphones, you all use apps, 
And probably all of this is built with the help of such software, of, in teams of dozens or even hundreds of people working together on the same piece of software. It is really the best and most powerful software probably that you can get to use, and it's for free. So um, now back to publishing manuscript and to writing manuscript scripts. Um, there's a nice experiment from the PJ journal. Uh, it's called Paper Now, and it is in this Git environment. It's a template basically for um, manuscripts, and it is a generator for websites. So you can draft a document in this environment, and it will always generate um, web, web, uh, a website. Sorry, <laughs> which the journal can style for you. So, for example, they could give you the official style and um, then you always see during the drafting process if everything's fine and how it looks. Unfortunately, it's just an experiment. There are no submission options yet. I found this way to work extremely interesting um, and efficient, so I hope they take this experiment further. But there's already a similar commercially available software which is, which is called Authoria that is kind of the Google Docs for scientists because it allows you to collaborate online on the same document with all these nice stuff that we need like citations, uh, figures, formulas, full LaTeX uh, is available as well, but it works also in Markdown. And they have submission options, so they say that with a single click um, yeah, you can submit or format your document for a particular journal, which I guess will take the most pain out of our writing um, tasks. So, so much for advertisement. Sorry, but <laughs> if you do not want to have your drafting publicly and online, uh, you can also use it offline. Um, Jens Erath from the University of Konstanz created a nice little project and bundled together some tools, basically. It's a crude hack probably, but it works. And it lets you do exactly this, what I mentioned before, bridging from a markdown document, which is very simple to write, to LaTeX, where you can use the full power of typesetting, a proper thesis, a book, a manuscript, article, whatever. So And so most of the time you do not have to deal with LaTeX because the software will take for you. So for example, um, a figure with caption is quite easy to do and a little bit of LaTeX is in here, so this internal linking of figures and the counting and so on uh, is possible as well. So, this was the main part, and now I also promised you a little bit about Word, and yeah, I, I did have to decide on a title. There was something about Word as well, and I only had time to test this in the last few days, so unfortunately I have to report that this writage uh, add-in that is available and it kind of works, but it um, it messes up the markdown code, so it's not human readable anymore, not really. Um, it renames your figure files and it loses figure captions, so it's probably not usable for true scientific documents, but maybe just for something uh, small. So here, this is not really readable, unfortunately. And here, this was not called image one, so bad luck, but it kind of works. So, by way of summary, um, we will change the title of this to Writing in Word, um, Write in Word, Save in Markdown, Publish in LaTeX, to ditch Word. Yeah, it's really not necessary anymore. You can use Markdown wherever possible. It is by now powerful enough even for scientists, even for physicists with mathematical formulas, because it just borrows from LaTeX. And if you do get stuck at some point, it can always be converted into something else. That was it. I want to thank you for your attention. If you have questions, of course, you can ask me now, ask me anytime, or email me. And, and I want to thank the organizers again for yeah, agreeing to this um, bit unusual talk. And Jens Erath also deserves a huge thanks for putting together this scientific markdown project, which is also what got me interested in this and got me started. Well, the funding is, of course, a bit difficult here because this was not <laughs> dedicatedly funded, but I also did some scientific work during this time. So. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>